Thank you for joining me today for the Healthy AF Podcast. With me is Dr. Ashley Saylor. Hi, Ashley. Thanks for joining me. All right. Me. It's good to see you. Thank you. Dr. Ashley is a, a chiropractor in yep. uh, Arveda, Colorado. So just outside Arveda. of Arveda. Yeah, Arveda, Arveda. Colorado. Arveda. I, I say it. It's okay if you're not from here. Plus, <laughs> You don't know that. You don't know that. Uh-uh. And you are, of course, like like many chiropractors I've met, that you get more into more of like the functional medicine side yeah. of things where you're really helping. Yeah, people. absolutely. Um, what I do as a doctor, not just going into chiropractic, but your body as a whole. Unfortunately, I think oftentimes when you're in certain fields, you tend to just focus on that and everything goes to the wayside. Um, as a practitioner and a patient myself, I definitely think that there is a better way to well-round your health than just to focus on the one thing. Sure. Yeah. Root cause, look for, yeah. So, so many like in traditional Western yep. medicine, it's everything's in silos, right? Everything seems like these little narrow. Yes. So like this, this specialist looks, just looks at this and that's, they have yeah. a couple tools for that one thing and everything. Yeah. looks like the nail for that tool. Right. Yes. And, and they don't really talk to each other much, even with the same patient, you don't see a lot of uh, communication back and forth between these specialists who are dealing with. No, no, you don't. And I think that's where a lot of things get missed for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got people that specialize in one thing and they're wonderful at it. Um, but oftentimes the ball is dropped when it comes to what's maybe the, the one thing that you're missing that perhaps because you're not on the same page or you just don't know. And, um, people's health kind of gets just, it gets pushed to the wayside where they feel like this is just what they have to deal with. Correct. Plus there's yeah. a, a focus on symptoms. Yeah. Let's oh yeah. This, and they don't treat until it becomes really a problem that has to yes. have a procedure or a medication. Absolutely. But they're, they're still treating the symptom. Whereas I think with, well, as you said, with the holistic approach where you're looking at the whole body or what you're looking for, what we, we can maybe alleviate some symptoms, but how do we address Fix the, problem. the root, yeah. root cause? Yeah. The actual problem. Yeah. And yeah. so you dealt with this yourself, as you said, you're a patient. Um, yeah. Struggled with Hashimoto's. Yes. Yes. Um, in about 2017, I now going back to graduate school, we were under quite a bit of stress. We had very high uh, workload. Um, You're we taking between 35 to 40 credits per trimester. And on top of that, you're doing clinicals. You have national board exams. I mean, it's just it's it's a lot. And uh, your health, like even if you're focusing on it, may not be ideal. Mine, I thought I was being healthy. Idealism of health is just so broad. And I think it definitely plays into why people get sick. It definitely did for me. Um, but I started to have little symptoms when I was in college, but I didn't think much of it. I had problems with acne, horrible problems with it. And um, I started to have issues with sleep and heart arrhythmias. Well, of course, what I'm told is that, you know, take a medication, Put topical on, uh, you know, we, if your heart arrhythmias continue, maybe we'll schedule you for an echocardiogram, you know, just all these different things. And it wasn't, it, it, I knew something was wrong, but it, it kind of, when I changed my diet, when I would get really on par with my diet, a lot of these symptoms would start to fade. So that's what prompted me to get into nutrition with chiropractic. And then um, as time went on, I'd go in and out with some of my symptoms but I never really saw a huge difference in my overall health until after I had my son. And I, I seem to see that very frequently with women is after they have children, because they have some teetering things going on prior to having children. A lot of it gets a little bit more um, noticeable after they've had kids. You've got stress, your hormones are changing, whatever. And that's when I started to kind of think it's like, you know, I'm tired all the time and I eat healthy. I get adjusted. I drink tons of water. I work out, you know, I, I do whatever and I shouldn't feel like this. So I prompted my doctor to check my thyroid. Next day she called me and she's like, you need to go get on meds. Your TSH is a 4.0. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do that, but thank you for letting me know. <laughs> and uh, I started to go through just a whole plethora of reading up on information with thyroid 
and diet and what could I do? Well, the thing they don't tell you too is that with thyroid issues, there are some things that don't really work with your body based upon how your gut health is, based upon what the attack is on the thyroid. And so when I'm changing things over, I'm finding that uh, I'll feel good for a little bit and then I tank. And I tried naturopathic medicine. I, I would never go on meds, I, but I was this close. I told my naturopath one day, I said, I'm so tired of feeling like this and pouring from an empty cup. When I can do really well seeing my patients, I love serving, I love helping them every day. That gives me energy. But when I go home, it's beyond being tired from just work. It is just an overall exhaustion because my body is struggling. It wasn't until probably, I, I just started doing keto. Um, I started following like Thomas DeLauer, Dr. Ken Berry, all these amazing people who have so much information on reducing inflammation. And uh, keto worked really well for a while. And then I, I, was, I was still teetering. I um, ended up getting, you know, the flu a couple times and uh, started to have bouts of getting sick often. And so I, one of my friends who is a phenomenal functional medicine doctor and chiropractor, Dr. Lauren Kolowski, she took it from a different angle, looking at things that even naturopathic medicine isn't looking at. So molds, parasites, fungal buildup, in addition to just getting rid of anything processed and more of a carnivore and animal-based diet. And going from keto to where I think I need to get a certain amount of veggies, like I was juicing spinach and kale and really watching my carbs and being as specific as I could. And it's like, gosh, I just, I'm not getting the full result. And so doing more research, you know, just is, is any doctor would, or even a health provider, trying to understand why things work for some people and why some things don't. And even for yourself, it's just being a guinea pig and seeing that, you know what? Uh, I feel better when I don't eat veggies. I, uh, I feel better when I eat tons of meat and eggs, butter, fish, plants I need, and my hair is starting to grow back. And as a female, I mean, it's for men too, it, it affects you. For yeah. women, when you start losing your hair or it's breaking, and mine was breaking, I wasn't losing, it was just breaking a lot. There's something that is wrong. And there, there's all these things out there like powdered collagen, which you only absorb 20%. You actually don't absorb 100% as you would with liquid collagen, but also getting it from your foods. Like, you know, beef, bison, you know, eggs, all that stuff. And... Uh, when you're, when you're doing all these things that you think are supposed to be good and then you're trying to maybe, you know, limit your salt intake, limit your, you, know, you don't want to do dairy because it's inflammatory. Well, what type of dairy? And you start going down all these rabbit holes. And when you start to see um, the simplicity of what used to be before, you know, big pharma, um, all these, you know, tobacco companies that own processed food companies, all these marketing tactics that they use to actually keep sick people sick. And I have this conversation daily in my office where patients say, you know, I, I, I want to do what you're doing, but I don't want to make those sacrifices. I, I don't want to, I, I don't know if I can do plain Greek yogurt. It doesn't sound good. Well, what if you add honey and berries to it? Well, you know, I, I, I'd rather do this. Well, you have two paths to follow every day. You can be sick or you can be healthy. And it's every decision that you make. So are you gonna go have pizza and ice cream? Or maybe you do plain Greek yogurt with berries, honey, and dates. And maybe you make a cauliflower pizza. You know, there's an 80-20 rule. There's plenty of amazing people out there who put out all this wonderful information. Dr. James DiNiglantano is another good one. Dr. Paul Saladino. You know, all this great info and it all works. It's trying to get it to what uniquely, if it's, if it's your subjective complaint, you know, what is going on with you? You cannot tell everyone that they can do keto or that they can do paleo or whatever, but they need to be getting nutrients that their body needs and you have to narrow it down to what their specific wants and needs are. And if you're missing that boat with throwing, even, even in naturopathic medicine, 
throwing supplements or foods at symptoms, you are still missing that, that whole ball. And so if you're not actually getting to the, the deepest root cause, not just the surface of it, but the deepest root cause, then you're still going to miss all that. And, it's, and it is a forever process. You are constantly trying to improve. You're constantly trying to um, figure out what works best for you and then capitalize off of that, not in a monetary way, but in a way where you're getting the best significant sources of nutrients, protein, and fats to live a healthy quality life, not living longer because you're sick and on medications, trying all the new health fads. It's, uh, you know, the big one right now, which, you know, totally taboo for me to say is going to be being vegan because you see all these people, all these actors, um, athletes, whatever. They're like, I tried it and it just about killed me. And uh, I, I tried it for three weeks just to work on my inflammation. And this was probably four years ago, just to work on my inflammation. I felt great for three weeks and then I tanked. And it's like, this isn't sustainable. And that's the other thing too. We want to give people, everyone, a sustainable eating plan. You know, foods, exercise, chiropractic, anything to actually allow them to thrive. And hey, you know what? You want to go get ice cream with your kids? Go do it. Maybe you make a, a little healthier choice with it. You know, don't feel like you have to deprive yourself. But give yourself a fighting chance instead of going all in and finding that it's too hard, there's too much overwhelming information. You know, get back to the simplicity of being centered with your health and just build off of that. And if you go off track for a day or two, okay, well, that's not going to kill you. Get back to where you need to be and just make a conscious effort every day. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's true. It's a daily decision. It's a daily decision. Um, I think, you know, let's, let's, uh, for, for me, the listeners who may not be, who may not understand the difference between just low thyroid and Hashimoto's. Yeah. Can we, can you help unpack that to find that? Oh yeah. More clearly. So, there is I mean, a it's, yeah. yeah, it's, it is a, um, it is a broad package and that, uh, one of the biggest things, um, it, it tends to be a female driven thing. Men have it too. I mean, it is interesting that it tends to be more female. And I definitely think that plays a lot with different hormonal factors. Um, the low thyroid, you know, fatigue, hair, um, bloating, acid reflux, constipation, there's all these things. And they start to become the normal heart arrhythmias, uh, increased or low heart rate, difficulty sleeping, insomnia. Um, those are just a list of some of the symptoms and they can change based on different factors with each person. Um, but low thing with low thyroid is a higher TSH actually means your thyroid is functioning low. A lower TSH means your thyroid's functioning too much, which is Graves disease. Hashimoto's tends to be more common. I definitely think there's a lot of factors that play into that. Um, one of the biggest ones is just with our food sourcing and um, other things that are in, you know, air, water, things that we have to get, you know, when we're younger, um, that maybe set us up to these possibilities as we get older with stress, you name it. So when your thyroid is low, um, it just starts to unravel into this just chronic fatigue. You're fatigued, you're irritable, um, you're, you're not maybe getting enough nutrition, and then um, when those factors, your, your thyroid, your TSH can even say it's normal. Or when you get labs, um, thyroid, TSH, T3, T4, normal. Your antibody titers are off the charts. Another thing with uh, Hashimoto's is it tends to be one of the biggest factors. It's not the only one, but Epstein-Barr virus, which is mono. Epstein-Barr virus, which I, I think it's like 85 to 90% of the world's population has had it at some point. When you have it, it just, it never goes away. Those viruses lay dormant. It typically lays dormant in the thyroid. So when you have a stressful event that triggers it, such as, you know, perhaps a loss of a loved one, um, pregnancy, can, it's, it's not 
traumatic it's beautiful but it's it can be traumatic to the body sure um it's how it affects it um if you're going through you know a stressful time in your life just any of those factors can actually trigger it once that trigger's tripped there's really not a lot going back and it's just there's small things that start to add up the thing with hashimoto's though too is if you have low thyroid um it does affect everything else because thyroid is like it is your key key player for regulating. And if it's not regulating correctly, it usually goes hand in hand with adrenal. So if your adrenals aren't functioning correctly or they're overtaxed, those two talk to each other. And if they're not signaling correctly, then you start to have an abundance of symptoms. And it can lead into other autoimmune diseases too. So you could essentially get on different thyroid medications. The issue with that um, it's like filling a cup and poking a hole in the bottom. You're going to replenish the hormones, but you're actually not fixing the issue. And what, what, what's triggering it? There's a plethora of things. Is it a virus? Is it bacterial? Is it your gut health? Um, there's a bunch of different ways to go about it. So it's just figuring out, again, every person is truly, their health is subjective to them. It's not a broad range, but they're told it's a broad range. Right, right. So it's so it's immune system. So you mentioned a virus getting caught in thyroid or rest kind of hiding there. If you yes, uh, then your immune system is attacking your thyroid, trying to get to that virus, so to speak. Yes, it identifies your thyroid as that virus. Yes, exactly. Any autoimmune process, whatever it might be, if it's lupus, Hashimoto's, you name it, the body sees that organ or that tissue as a foreign invader and it starts attacking it. And that's, that's what autoimmune disease is. Your body's attacking itself and it's, it is, uh, if people could see on the inside what it's doing, they would stop all these other things immediately and try to fix it. Sure. For sure. So how did you, so you determined it was Hashimoto's that you were struggling with. And so you're saying you're, you adjusted other lifestyle factors to I did. So what, what would happen is so that virus or whatever it was that, uh, that your immune system was identifying became uh, cleansed or how does that, how does that work? It's, you know, it's, it's there, it's a bunch of different factors. I found out in 2017, I had it. So that's when I started going down different paths with, okay, what can I change in my diet? Like I thought I was eating really clean. You know, I'd have my pizza every now and then I, I was eating gluten, but very sparsely because I really don't eat much stuff with gluten, but I wasn't really reading labels. Well, I started um, going down the path of, okay, soy, dairy, um, and it the processed dairy and gluten were a huge factors, especially gluten because gluten can actually mimic thyroid cells in the body. So when you eat it, it looks like excess thyroid um, tissue or not tissue, I'm sorry, hormone is being released. So the body's like, whoa, this, this isn't okay. We need to fix this. And so it starts attacking you. Your thyroid becomes the problem, but it's not actually the problem. And um, there are a bunch of different symptoms that can go along with it, but uh, different foods can trigger it. There are very um, big issues with cruciferous vegetables triggering your thyroid. And the more research I've done in veggies, because, you know, you think they're so good for you and you have to kind of look at a bunch of different factors, but oxalates are one of the biggest things that I have found that are a huge contributor to health issues. And you could have zero issues at all and you're just trying to do the right things. Well, if you're juicing spinach and kale and, you know, add turmeric and cinnamon to it, well, guess what? Those are some of the highest oxalate counts. And, Oxalic acid will bind to those calcium crystals and cause an array of health issues. Um, one of the big ones is kidney failure or kidney stones. And uh, as a doctor, you know, it's like you start learning all this stuff. You think that you're doing the right thing. You think you're telling your patients what to do. And it's, it's all in, in a, it, there's good heart to it. But the more you learn, you start to unlearn what's been taught because everything is plant-based now. And when you use the buzzwords, soy-free, sugar-free, gluten-free, fat-free, um, meat-free, whatever you want, usually when it has that, 
you can pretty much figure that you want to go the complete opposite route of it because it's all chemicals, even in the foods. And so when you're trying to do these healthy things, you're actually triggering things more and then you can't understand why. And so it becomes very easy to want to give up and just go on medications or figure out a different route um, that maybe you're like, you know, I've tried all these things, nothing's helping me. So it's, it, it becomes very defeating for tons of people. And I see it in my office all the time. And you just, you want to get in people's heads, just be like, these, these barriers, these things where you've tried these different routes and maybe you've had a little bit of success and then it seems to plateau, what are we missing? And that's where, like I said, with functional medicine, with, you know, a different type of doctor where they're going to look for the deepest, you know, mold, fungus, and um, parasites. You're doing all these things. Well, if you're not clearing those out, you could eat total carnivore and you're still going to have those issues. It just may not be as bad. Mm -hmm. So it has to do with clearing out, yeah, some, some, yeah. some uh, toxins that are just kind of built up. Yes. Okay. You can't out gotcha. nutrient a toxicity, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, yeah, yeah it does. and the, the diet alone, like you said, would necessarily do that. You could buy get rid of the uh, gluten, you get rid of the lectins, and, you know, the, the uh, gluten and lectins. Yes. Safe, but oxalates and so forth. But, uh, but if you have mold and oof, that's a, and, and parasites, that's a very different uh, process. Yeah. Yeah, and what, uh, you know, the medical community, um, you know, they, they look at parasites as being like, you know, you drink bad water when you went on right. a trip and it's causing GRD or, you know, whatever, you know. Right. And uh, they give you something to clear it out. Well, if there's stuff that keeps permeating and keeps building, there's not anything that you can do with tons of meds or diet. Like, it'll help a little bit perhaps, but it's not going to actually get rid of it. We're looking to get rid of it. And until you make those steps, then you won't. How on earth would you know to do that? How would anyway? You don't have to be a doctor to know this stuff, to know how to change your health. But if you're not given guidance on how to work with the symptoms you have and getting to that deeper root cause instead of throwing pills and supplements at symptoms and even nutrition at symptoms, start looking to that deeper root layer and attack it that way. And honestly, there are very few doctors, like I said, my colleague, Dr. Lauren, that actually take that step. I know a ton of wonderful docs, MDs, naturopaths, you name it. There are very few that are going just that extra step to actually figure out, okay, you know what? You're doing all these great things, but there's still that one thing missing. And, um, it, you know, even like for me as a practitioner, just that, that one little thing that I was missing was making or breaking my health. And it's, it's not fun to be the doctor and then, you know, struggling while I'm here to see patients and wanting to serve it the best of my ability. When I know on the inside, I don't feel great. And then going home and trying to be a good mom and play with my kids and, and you know, be a good spouse and, and enjoy time. You know, I, I was just exhausted beyond, you know, repair. And it, it started to scare me. And it's like, what can I do? And the biggest blessing I could have had was to find my, my colleague who I've known for years but didn't know that she went deeper into that. And it's been a whole, it's changed my life, you know. Wow, that's fantastic. So how long would you kind of got your doc and diagnosed what the issue was and started addressing it? How long was it before you felt like you had a real clearance and were moving? This last forward? year. I found out in 2017 that I had it. I did paleo, worked on and off for two years. I did vegan, like I said, for three weeks. That did not help. I did keto for two years. And, and, I, and I always do intermittent fasting. I love intermittent fasting. I think there's a lot of benefits with that. But um, keto, uh, I would feel good, but I was not getting enough nutrients. And um, if anything, it was kind of making my thyroid worse. And so it's when I started looking at, okay, I can't out-nutrient a toxicity. I have to try to figure out what keeps 
triggering these autoimmune flares, just besides you, know, we all have these stressors, um, right. you know, just from daily, daily tasks, you know, um, but why, why do I keep feeling like this? I'm doing all these things and my patients have no clue that I feel like this. I don't want them to, but what can I do to, to better serve to, to help other people who have similar things? Like they're trying their best and it's just not working. And, um, yeah, it was a year ago in July when I started working with Dr. Lauren. And then I started to look more into carnivore and animal based diet. And it's like, you know, instead of counting my carbs, which I don't disagree with, I, I think keto is a right. wonderful, wonderful eating plan. Um, but I love eating an animal based diet and eating till I'm full and feeling like I'm getting enough protein and fats and nutrients through my day. Um, you know, Dr. Anthony Chafee is another one. I look into his stuff quite a bit too, because all these MDs like Paul Saladino, Anthony Chafee, Dr. Sally Norton, you know, all of them, MDs who found that allopathic medicine was just training you for eight to 12 years of schooling, how to throw pills at symptoms. And if they don't work, then, well, I guess, oh, well, that's just how life's going to be for you. And you got to live with it. You know, how, how depressing is that for people? And that's why people give up and they turn to other things like food, alcohol, what have you, because they're like, well, if, if this is how it is for me, then what good is it for me to try to change to be healthy when I'm not ever going to feel good? Right. Right. Why do all the things, the hard things, and then not have a benefit? Yeah. Yeah. Because they aren't necessarily addressing the correct root. Yeah, and so how would you, they? Yeah, how would they yeah, know? How would they know? Right, yeah. without someone telling. Yeah. And so you're, so the diet obviously helps, but you're saying, for helping you address whatever that root cause was for you. Yes. It took it took about a, not you said nine months to a year, give or take. To, yeah, and I'm I'm still working with Dr. Lauren. I mean, she gave me twelve to eighteen months to really see a change. I when I started working with her, I saw a difference in three weeks, and then I went through detox. And uh, boy, that was unpleasant. <laughs> it's, I'm sure. It's hard to be working on patients and then be like, oh my gosh, my, my stomach is just killing me because my body's trying to do its job and get rid of it. And that's the other thing with what I try to tell people. When you're getting rid of however many you know, years, decades of poison, and the second you don't feel good, people want to bail. Because it's like, oh, this isn't fun. Well, you know, is it fun to feel crummy all the time? To, yeah. to not be living your life in, a, in a, the best, healthiest way possible with vibrance and energy and, and just quality living? Right. You know, or do you want to just keep taking things to see if maybe one day I might feel a little bit better? You know, um, it's, it's getting down to the nitty gritty and trying to fix that. And then adding in all the other good things to complement it. Right now, it's it's it's, it's complex and it does take you like you said. It uh, does yeah. determination and discipline and like okay, I'm gonna stick yeah. to it, get through this, understanding that you're you're changing like you said, build up of, of decades, which we all we all have that some level until we become aware of yes. the toxins that we're putting in our body and exposed to yeah. on a regular basis. Wes. Wow, that's incredible. So, uh, yeah, that's great that you're sharing that. I'm sure a lot of, like you said, people can feel, I think, and relate to you uh, going through that and how you are continuing to work and being pushed through. And they can see, well, she, Dr. Ashley's doing it. Hey, I can, I can do it too. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's that example of being, I'm not just saying, we have a problem here. You can push through it. It's fine. But you've never experienced it. You've actually walked me through it. So. Yeah, that puts you in a different position. Uh, I think that a lot of your your patients could identify with and realize it's doable, and there's a there's a there's a light at the end. So that's that's incredible that you share that with them. Well, um, thank you. It's it's a blessing. I find that some of the best healthcare providers are the ones that have lost their health because then they have to figure out how to find it again, and then it makes you more relatable to your patients and. Uh, it's, it is actually a blessing. That's the silver lining in having these things happen. Um, you don't ever wish for it. 
you don't want anyone to have this, but unfortunately it does happen. So you can take two paths with it. You can continue being sick or you can try to find health and happiness and, and work through it and know that just because you're doing all this stuff doesn't mean you're going to have days where you're, you don't feel 100%. It's mm. even if you're doing all the right things. And that's important too. People need to realize that just because you change all these things and you're doing all these amazing things does not mean that there's going to be a day or two where maybe you're not feeling a thousand percent, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're purging like something like oxalates, that could be. Oh, yeah. The, the toxic overloads, you go really hardcore with that. You, you will start dumping oxalates and coming out of your system. Yeah. That won't feel good. That won't nope. come. Uh, that's awesome. So let's get into that. Let's, uh, yeah. how, how, yeah. what have you seen with your patients? Since you're, I mean, you start, uh, you've been through the diet, kind of the typical diet path that I hear from a lot of people, the paleo to the keto to the kind of the carnivore animal based yeah. uh, melding. And over a period of, it sounds like uh, about four or five years. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. And so you're passing that on to your patients now, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, what are you seeing with your patients? What kind of changes are you seeing? I mean, other. I mean, everyone thinks about weight loss as being the big thing. That I know. Address. Yeah. And it. And I. Yeah. I, tr I do my best to like. Okay. I, I'm a trainer. That's been where I kind of came through things was weight loss. But there's so much more to address with your diet than just whether yeah. or not you need to lose weight or whether or not you can see yeah. your abs in the mirror. You know, it's totally. Like, it's not about a beach body, this is like your blood work. This is your, yeah. uh, how you feel each day, you know, the things yep. that inflammation building up. So I'd love to get into some of that, what you're seeing with your patients. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I see all walks every day. You know, I have patients I, and I'm very short, you know, I'm 5'2". I have some right. of these guys that are like six, eight that come in here, these big guys or, you know, I have these petite little females that come in here that are actually harder to adjust than some of these big dudes, you know? So um, all walks of life, all kinds of things that have gone on. And the one thing that I find that is pretty common across the board is trying to figure out where things kind of derailed and starting to come back to health. And, you know, from a chiropractic standpoint, what I, you know, tell all my patients and anyone I speak to, because I live and breathe chiropractic, it is, it's like a totally different language, but it's, it is so beautiful in allowing the body to function more optimally by taking pressure off the nervous system. So when you have a, a misalignment, I'll actually grab a, a little tool here because I'm visual. When you have a misalignment, you're it's called a subluxation. Your body is trying to communicate to everything. Well, you know, this is what healthy vertebra discs look like. Alignment, that's perfect. When you get a misalignment or a subluxation, the disc or the joint either rotates, it'll laterally bend, or it'll move forward or backwards. Well, you can see, I mean, I know it's a little bit difficult with this with the camera, but this doesn't look so good. So this is what's gonna cause the bulging disc and chronic wear and tear. Well, when I'm adjusting, I'm not taking, I'm not, I'm not curing anything. I'm just taking the pressure off the disc and joints and nerve to allow the brain to talk to the body through your nerve pathways. So when I adjust that, it's just realigning it. So just think of like a cell phone to a cell phone tower. If those signals aren't clear, messages won't get through. Same thing for your body. So that also plays into the way people, their health is managed. So maybe someone doesn't need chiropractic care at all but they changed their diet. Well, they're seeing good results, but there's still these little things here and there. So it's truly taking everything as a whole and complementing it. You know, getting that gut health right, molds, parasites, fungal buildup, any of these deeper toxins that are rooted in the tissues, um, getting that nervous system functioning and, and seeing people thrive and be able to move better. And with diet, it's really getting these roadblocks out of your head that I really want ice cream. I really want chips. I really want pizza, burgers, you know, whatever. Well, they're a comfort for you. They have excitotoxins. They're injected with a bunch of chemicals to make you think that you feel good. So your dopamine is up here and then your body just tanks. And so if you're, if you're just doing one thing, but you've got all these other things over here that you're not adding in to complement, 
your results are going to be very varied and they're not going to be, um, they're probably not going to be as optimal as you would hope. And so what I see with patients when, I, and I'll tell every single person that walks in my door, you're coming in here because you're in pain. You, or you want wellness care. You want your spine adjusted. You are already understanding that there's huge benefits into taking pressure off that nervous system. Awesome. You're already ahead of the game. Well, did you know that the foods that you're eating, the air that you're breathing, the water that you're drinking has a chemical reaction or environmental or physical component to it? And um, physical stressors, emotional stressors, and chemical stressors can cause subluxation. So it's not just a matter of you fell off your snowboard and you tweaked your neck or that you were, you slept funny or you were lifting something into a truck and your low back went out. That, that's what most people think of when it comes to your spinal health and then tying it into the rest of your body, but it's actually a collective. And so what I try to tell my patients every day is like, okay, when you get adjusted, what are you doing to maintain your adjustment? Oh, well, you know, I just, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for stretching. I don't have time to work out. I'm busy. I, you know, I want to drink more water, but I'm just too busy through the day. I can't stop to pee every, you know, hour. Um, I want to eat healthy, but I don't know where to start. Or it's, they're, they're not trying to make excuses. They, they truly think they just don't know where to begin, but they are excuses. It's all living. But when you give them, like narrow it down to say, okay, this is what I want you to do. But maybe you start by, you wake up and you salt your water in the morning. You know, you get salt water to get your electrolytes and you get morning sunlight. Oh, well, what does that do? You know, people don't know because what has been bombarding them from day one is all the things that we are supposed to do, you're being told not to do. And it's essentially unlearning the medical model. And the medical model goes farther than just medications. As you and I know, it's, it's gonna be your nutrition. It's gonna be your sleep, your you know, spinal, your nervous system health, your electrolytes, all of that. And if you're not compiling them as a whole, you're not gonna see results. And so I give patients a whole list of, you know, I know you don't wanna change your diet right now, but maybe you start drinking more water and you get three liters of water a day and you're adding salt and then some fun electrolytes that are clean. Well, I can do that. Oh yeah, cool, cool. Hey, guess what? You lost 20 pounds just doing that. Why don't you start adding in, you know, more fat and protein? Well, I thought fat was bad. Well, not necessarily. The good fat, you want beef tallow, well, what's that? Duck fat, what the heck, you know? What about avocado oil and coconut oil? Well, I thought they said these were good things. Well, the they that you're talking about are the ones that are trying to suppress health, unfortunately, to market a product and make more money. And the more you start to see that and you start to learn that salt isn't going to cause high blood pressure. Salt is not going to clog up my arteries. Fat is not going to cause a heart attack or stroke. It's unhealthy fat when you're overweight and you're eating seed oils and sugars that are just accumulating and they don't stop. And the more you keep adding it, what you, I just did a post on this um, yesterday, what you eat matters. And I don't put any of that up to get likes. I just want to help as many people as possible. I don't care if I get zero likes on it. People are going to see it and they're going to start to understand like, Dr. Ashley, What's a lot of this stuff up here that's totally different than what I see every day? Why? You know, what, what's the deal with this? Or, you know, I'm 100 pounds overweight. I, I can't fathom trying to change that. Where do I even begin? Like, there's no hope for me. I'm just going to sit here and eat my pizza and my donuts and ice cream and have my beer and call it good. Well, when you start to show people that there is hope, and that there's different things they can do and they just have to take it step by step. Even like, especially thyroid patients, that is one of the biggest things with females and thyroid because it is so ubiquitous. Um, and low thyroid, if people just say, oh, I have, I have hypothyroid, but I don't have Hashimoto's, they're like, well, did you know that 90 to 95% of hypothyroid patients do have Hashimoto's? 
But they're not going to tell you that. Why? They're going to throw you on meds. You're going to feel better for a while. And then you're going to tank. And then they're going to, you know what? You have acid reflux because you're not making enough hydrochloric acid. Well, why is that? Well, your thyroid talks to your stomach and your kidneys and your adrenals and your ovaries and everything. And if things are not firing correctly, then you're going to have a plethora of these issues. They're going to just keep happening and they're going to get worse and worse until you start having more serious health issues that even your blood work is fine. You're actually teetering at the higher end of abnormal or the lower end of normal until you go into a serious event that prompts the doctors to start doing more search. And it shouldn't be that way. Right. You're waiting until something really flares up that yeah. they can treat it. Yeah. And so it sounds like that a lot of these, it's not just a caloric thing, there's an inf inflammatory part of this that you start addressing with some of these really simple habits yeah. that reduces the inflammation, which then allows them to lose some weight because inflammation was in their gut or wherever it was very yeah. much a part of their weight gain. It didn't really have yeah. to do with, they were overeating or under moving necessarily, but it's yeah. what the, the chemical impact of their food. Yeah. And what, besides weight loss, what else are you, what else, other improvements are you seeing with these kinds? Um, you know, like I said, animal-based diet, you know, biggest thing for me when I started to see that my hair was breaking and I, I have finer hair, but I have a lot of it. Never once have I had issues with it just breaking. Well, you want to talk about a punch to the stomach and you're just how you feel about yourself. And especially as a provider, when patients are like, right. Dr. Saylor, are you doing okay? Like, you know, I, mm. I don't want to talk about myself. I want to talk about right. them when they're in here. And so I would, um, I'd wear my athletic attire a lot and wear a baseball cap and make myself look presentable to work, you know, look decent. And that way people weren't asking me questions. And so when they saw, and I've shared with them, especially the female patients, like, this is why I've been doing this. I had no idea. You, you always seem and look so healthy. And I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys what I'm dealing with because that's not my job. My job is to help you with what you're dealing with. But you might listen to me a little bit more when you know that, hey, guess what? I'm struggling with the same things that you are. Or there are other things that are going on that are hindering my health that um, maybe in me trying to figure out what's going on, I can help you with it. And so these female patients, skin issues, which I got rid of those a long time ago, thankfully, just for changing my diet, um, even before I did animal-based. But seeing them change with their health and, you know, their hair's growing, their skin looks better, maybe the dark under their eyes is bad, uh, maybe their skin tone overall, their color looks better. I just, I see patients just go backwards in aging. It's like a Benjamin Button situation. Like, they go from looking you know, maybe five to even 20 years older than they are. And then it's like they're moving backwards. Well, Dr. Ashley, why is this? And why, why am I looking better and feeling better? Not just because I'm eating healthy. What is going on? Well, you're turning the clock backwards. You're getting your mitochondria to produce more at a higher rate to help you. We're not meant to look like we're 50 when we're 30. We're not meant to look like we're 80 when we're 50. You know, it's we're supposed to look and age with grace and our body's supposed to age with grace if we take care of ourselves. But, you know, you look when a lot of this started was more in the 80s when they started to come out with, you know, fat-free, sugar-free, all that stuff, telling you that salt was bad and um, that, you know, sugar's okay. Sugar's not the one thing that's killing you. It's, it's okay. You can go get McDonald's. You can go get all this. Well, McDonald's switched to using seed oils on their French fries in the 90s. Well, guess what they used before that? Beef tallow. Tallow. And, you know, I mean, it's all these things like you and I know this, but the majority of people, I, I see people like when I go to the store and I'm looking at what they're getting. And it's like, I want to help every single one of you. I want to give every single one of you my card. Please let me help you. <laughs> know that... You don't have to find comfort and happiness in food that is only going to make you happy for a matter of minutes, and then it's going to make you so much sicker for years to come. And just 
getting people to change. And some people, like, they've seen me for 10 years, and they maybe just are like, you know, I saw one of your posts, or you're always talking about doing salt water or eating animal-based, and I'm kind of interested in that. And I, I watched one gal, she, for probably, I think, four or five years of a trainer, same type of things, and all of a sudden, she totally changed her health. She's lost a ton of weight. She's looking awesome. She feels better. And it's like, wow, what are you doing? She was like, just, I'm watching what I eat. I think animal-based is a great way to go. Not everyone wants to necessarily go that route. But hey, if you're taking steps to make yourself better and you're limiting or just getting rid of processed junk, then you're already on a better path. For sure. Yeah, yeah. processed food, I think, is the, the biggest most disruptive introduction into our diet in the last 120 years oh, yeah. that we've seen where all the diseases really stem from, where they increase yeah. the disease to the point. And now it's, it's at least 60% of the average American diet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's processed food. Yeah. And so they, they create this battle between, oh, are you going to eat meat or are you going to eat your vegetables and fruit? And it's like, that's not really the choices people are making right now between meat, no. and, veg meat and vegetables and fruit. If they're eating meat and vegetables and fruit, they're not usually... There's not usually a tug of war there. Most people in the average American yeah. diet, you know, yeah. it's how much processed food are they eating, not how much yeah. whole food of yeah. any kind are they eating. It's how yeah. much processed food they're eating. I mean, once they, if they get rid of processed food, then, like you said, you see the changes, the inflammation again, and weight, clarity, and then they can start parsing out, well, this food tends to make me feel this way. This We're talking that we're down to whole food. Then we yeah. can get fine-tuned in the whole food. Yeah. Like the animal base allows you to yeah. avoid inflammation, avoid inflammatory foods. Yeah. Find out what works for you and the ratio that works for you. But you're not going to be able to touch that to get rid of the processed food mm -hmm. and really see what you're you're working with. Yeah. In terms of, you know, uh, if s specific foods like spinach or, you know, a certain grain or something, some kind of like, uh, you know, it, it, it could be as simple as uh, sweet potato is a little too much oxalate or something. You know, it could be, and, and simple, whereas most people, sweet potato would be a great choice. But, yeah. But it's yeah. your tipping point in your yes. oxalate load could be coming from, you know, a, a little bit of spinach in your shake and, a, and, a, and eating a couple of sweet potatoes, which you think is a whole food. It is. Yeah, it is. But it could be the tipping point in your oxalate load. And so that's something you need to address. Yes. To reduce your oxalate load. And then maybe... Yeah. Sweet potatoes has a plate, a small place down yeah. there, but, but let's, let's figure out what's really going on here. But it, it starts with the process, getting rid of the processed food, the seed oils, the processed grains, the processed yep. sugars. And when we really see the, the change come back, uh, the change move, the needle move quickly, we need to get rid of those. Yeah. And then you can start fine tuning. But yeah, I think, I think it's, uh, you know, any whole food diet is better than one that's primarily processed, processed food. Just, oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, totally. keto, keto could be, you could eat keto and be eating 80% of a keto based processed food. Totally. Ooh. Well, that dirty keto. Yeah. Right. It's a dirty yeah. keto. And so it's still processed. And so I think, yeah, I think there's a turning point where we're seeing more and more people realize, okay, even the, even the process of keto or low carbs stuff like that written on there, it's not much different than hard healthy stamped on there for, you know, oatmeal, right? Or, oh, or, yeah. Right, or, yeah. or, or, or uh, raisin bran or whatever else they stamp yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. But we're seeing a, sh a shift where the people are realizing it's the processed food, it's the oils, it's the combination of the oils, the grains, the sugars. Yeah. When the light comes on, and so, yes. you know, they realize, oh my gosh, there is a, the, the new, a renewed passion, I think, for health that you see. Yeah. It's very hard to go from the regular standard American diet to just animal based unless you're just willing to do it. Like it's like start, you know, taking care of some of the things that are inhibiting you, processed foods and, you know, granola and oatmeal, raisin bran. You know, I mean, there's that commercial like where the guy puts crown molding on the mom's like, are you on the raisin bran? And he, they're like praising him for being on this. It's like, well, you know, they're. The marketing tactics are so on point and people are like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this. Like, this is healthy. It's grains. It's, uh, it's raisins, you right. know, and I'll use my rice milk or my 
Oat Only. milk with it because yeah. that's supposed to be out there. Well, boy, you want to start going down another rabbit hole. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, you want to get to single based ingredients right. or two or three. You, you know, you did a post where it was oat milk, raw milk. Oat milk is so overly processed and horrible for you and extremely high in omega-6 linoleic acid. And when you say high in omega-6, people are like, oh, well, omega-6, that's supposed to be good. No, not when it's over, like, overkill. Right. And you're getting very minute amounts of omega-3s. Right. Well, no one needs to be chasing omega-6s. We get plenty. No. There's plenty. There's plenty coming at us. And totally. We get plenty yeah. of just living. You know, just yeah. eating, eating chicken, you could get yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. So it's really not something to chase, but it's just yeah. it's one of those things where um, I think it's a simple message that most people can understand. They don't feel yeah. like they're going extreme. It's like, okay, whole food, eat like you ate on a farm. You would eat on a farm 120 years ago, yeah. or whatever, in the 1800s, as opposed to if it didn't exist, then don't eat it. Let's try that for a few weeks and see how you feel. Yeah. Get rid of any multi-ingredient foods yeah. and stick to... If it has multiple ingredients, it's because you put each of those in there, right? Yeah. You, it's something you put together, single ingredient food, see how you feel. Yeah. And while we know there's a long process there to get all those omega-6 oils out of your body and to really encourage the system to the level we've been talking about, yeah, there's still going to be an improvement in, in oh, how they yeah. feel, and sleep, everything else. Um, yeah. By just eliminating the toxin, eliminate the processed food, yeah, and then figure out like how how deep they want to go but for me it's like let people be on their journey yeah 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 if you if you sit there and like but oh you know you're you got rid of all this other stuff but you're still eating ice cream or you're still eating granola or oatmeal or you're still having that diet coke okay well you know you want to put a humongous halt into that patient's progress or that person's right. progress start throwing darts at them like just nitpicking right. and it's like be proud of them for making this step. And if they want to go further into it, they will. I mean, I used to have such a huge sweet tooth. Like, it's like I can't give up my keto ice cream, you know? I can't uh, give up my dark chocolate. And um, the more I started detoxing a lot of that stuff, I found that when I'd eat those things, one of my biggest triggers, um, I would get heart arrhythmias. And I've had them since I was a little kid. I don't mm. thankfully have a heart issue. It's how my body responds to something it doesn't like. So it's really easy. You know, I have a bite and like 10 minutes later, I'm like, ooh, that does not feel good. You know, and anyone in medicine would be like, oh my gosh, you have got to get on meds. You have got to do this. Well, no, right. you just got to stop putting crap into your body and know that if you do, your body can handle it, but you might not feel good for a little bit. And if that becomes a pattern, then you're going to have bigger things build up. And again, those two roads, do you want to be healthy? Do you want to be sick? Mm -hmm. Right. And you really have to choose Yeah. at that point. Like what is more important to you? And I, I try to encourage people to find something to, to make them want that. That might be beyond, it's not the beach body. Maybe you're not, maybe that's not important enough. But for most people, it's not important. Yeah. Enough to change. It. It's not about that. It's not about your, how you look at your swimsuit. It's like, it's your long-term health. It's being, it's being able to show up in your career. It's being able to show up for your family. Yeah. Download, not just in your fifties or sixties or seventies and be there in a very strong and, and, and meaningful yeah. way. Yeah. And think about the legacy you're going to leave. Yes. For, for, for your family as a, yeah. as someone who had an impact on them. And then they set the example. It's like, they're going to, you're setting an example with every decision you make. Yeah. If you can make these changes at this point in your life and change your health and be an example of, of health at yeah. your age, then they'll see it. And so yeah. think if, 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 if changing your own body is not enough for you, think about how it's impacting the people closest to you or, or your income or whatever else it is that triggers yeah. you to get out of bed in the morning. Put that thing, associate that with your health and your diet and how you're addressing yeah. uh, your lifestyle, all your lifestyle choices with sleep. Absolutely. Food. Well, and and yeah. that's, 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 that is your motivator. Uh, it is, yeah. Because we all have different things. You and I can nerd out on the mechanism, on, on the work. Yeah, yeah. Well, this does this to my body. This, you know, and yep. can, that, that's enough for us. We do. We know oh, it works yeah. this way. And, but for most people, that's not the case. And so no. we've got to find the thing that, that drives them yep. and associate it with their health. 
And that's really uh, something that you, you always have to say it straight out to them. Like, well, what is it? What is it that makes you make yeah. changes? What have you changed for your career? What have you changed for your family? Why isn't this just as important as that was? No, oh, yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, if if you have driving factors, like if it's if you have a newborn baby, mm. you're like, you know what? I want to have that energy. I want to be there. I want to watch them get married one day, you know, right. and play with my grandkids and actually play with them and not be you know, stuck on the couch or, or visited by them in the home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. You know, it's what drives you and what's going to give you the best possible outcome. For years to come, like my biggest thing is I for years, I just I wanted to have that six pack. I'm like, I want that six pack. And what you find, too, especially as a female, that's actually not that healthy for you to be that low body, that percentage. Like you can have a good physique, but you want to be careful. You know, there's two extremes. You can be overweight or too lean right. to where it, it really does mess with you. And yeah, finding that drive, like, yes, if it, if you're going to do better at your job because you're feeling better and you're focused, what can that mean for your, your lifestyle and your home? What can it mean for your family? I mean, health is not just about weight loss. I think that is what is talked about the most is, you know, getting rid of that belly fat. Well, when you get rid of that belly, belly fat and you're doing better, what, what are you doing after that? Like, Right. Did you check that off your list and then that's it? Or did you really start like building like a list of things? Okay, so I want to go rafting with my teenagers. I want to go climb a 14er. You know, I want to be able to go play with my grandkids and not be winded after five minutes. No. You know, it, it truly, health needs to be an overall thing for the rest of your life to maintain, you know, a healthy daily activities and not just a temporary fix to appease to whatever vanity that is right. the correct fad. If it's, you know, you're going to be in a wedding and you need right. to get tan and, and buff, you know, for it, or um, you're going to, I don't know, go on a summer vacation and you're going right. to be on the beach and you want to have that bikini by, you know, it's, you want to have it year round. You want to look like that year round, not just for a short amount of time. Then you go back to how you were and then oh, yeah. despise your decisions and totally have all this regret just to try to go back. The thing is, is your body's so resilient. It can recover and heal, but you got to give it a fighting chance. Yes. Yeah. Looking at blood work, looking at all those things is important. Yeah. So not so much trying to move guys away from, especially as you get older, forget less about, forget, forget about the weight on the bar. Think less yeah. about the weight on the bar and think yeah. more about what does your blood work look like? What's your fasting insulin look like? What is your hormone panel look like? What, you know, yeah. where's, you know, these are the things we need to be focused on now, not how much are you squatting and benching, yeah. that kind of thing, you know, because those things, that's for you. That's, th those are vanity metrics compared to yep. the, the things that are showing up in your, in your blood work. Oh, yeah. And, so, and what's going to affect your longevity. It's like, yeah, hold muscle, yes. be, have a functional amount of strength, but move well, sleep well, have good have good metrics with your with your hormones, your insulin, yeah. thyroid, yep. uh, cortisol, all those things, testosterone. Oh yeah. And it's um, those will serve you far better than how much you can press on the bar. Oh yeah. And so that's that's really I think shifting the focus of health yeah. in that direction oh, and away from the vanity. Because mm -hmm. the vanity is achieved by a few, but but health, real health can be achieved by most if they will take the yeah. steps to, to do it. Oh, absolutely. You want something that's sustainable forever. I I used to be a power lifter. That's what got me into chiropractic. Oh, wow. And when I was 16, I was deadlifting 315 pounds and squatting, I know, not smart, squatting 275 and I benched 145. And I, it got me into health. It was uh, to train for volleyball. And, okay. um, I was training at this gym that um, the youth minister at my church, he owned it, and he's like, and he was a big dude. He could bench, squat, and deadlift 700 pounds easy. Mm. And he's like, just go there to train for volleyball to get, you know, more of an athletic edge. And then because I, I found that I was uh, okay at lifting weights, I started to really like to 
build up this self-esteem and confidence for myself that, hey, I can, I can lift this weight. And I was, you know, teenager and I weighed 105 pounds and I'm deadlifting twice my weight, you know, and I wouldn't recommend that to everybody, but getting into fitness at an early age and learning about your health early on really has a lot of advantages. It's just, uh, using them the right way. Like there's no way I would go lift 315 pounds now. Like oh, no. I done lift 135 and I keep it at that. Like I want to build up my health and my body so I can do my job and do it well because, you know, adjusting, you know, 45, 50 people every day, that, that will take a toll on you. Sure. And, and I tell patients that I have these big guys that come in here that lift hard and, some of the, the female patients that come in, they're ripped and they're like, they're very healthy, but they're still doing damage to their body. And that's where you have to find that line. Like, mm -hmm. awesome. You're already on a good start, but you don't need to be lifting all that weight. Like, what's going to sustain you? You know, if you're trying to curl 100 pounds, you know, are you going to do that when you're 75? Like, do you want, I mean, good goal to have, but maybe you go for the 65s. <laughs> Is it practical? You know, is it a practical yeah. goal? Is it a necessary goal? And, and what is it? Is, what is there a downside to it? Is there a risk? Yeah. To it, you know? Yeah. 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 So, absolutely. And, and what and what and what are you doing to facilitate that? Are you eating to facilitate the bigger bench press, the bigger curl, the bigger deadlift, or are you? Yeah. You know, thinking about your diet from a from a from a, uh, the concept of not so much growth and recovery from yeah. heavy lifting, but from your, the, the length of your life that you want to achieve and the kind of yeah. inflammation and health works. Cause sometimes those are not going in the same direction. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's health is such a fine line on both sides. It's just finding that happy medium and it's, it's for everyone, you know, and it's kids. I think that's one of the biggest things too, is kids need it so much and people neglect children's health because they think kids are resilient. And they'll be fine. Well, a lot of the stuff that starts to show up as an adult started when they were kiddos. For sure. You know, so, I mean, it's it's across the board. I mean, the topics are endless of how to be healthy, sustain it, tweak it. It's just finding that happy balance and then sustaining it. And then if you want to go deeper into it, then obviously, you know, have at it. But it's just finding balance. And I think the more people would find that as their um, starting point, it would be a little bit easier to, you know, continue down that health path instead of just getting too bombarded and, you know, Google doctoring everything and, and, and trying to figure out like, well, I have this, so I'm going to do this. And, you know, I, I, I want to do veggies because I know that they're good for me. Okay. Well, I'm not going to tell you to stop it, but if you're not feeling better, Right. Then maybe we start looking at edging some of those out. Maybe not all the way. Then maybe you take some other steps. Sure. And I think the biggest factor for any human being is going to be that psychological one. Getting away from learned behaviors and learned everything and starting to kind of unravel it. Just because it's something that is taught by the medical community or you see it on TV or you read it on the internet. Um, doesn't mean it's true and, and take my word for with a grain of salt, you know, like I know what works based upon what I've learned and as a doctor, knowing the body inside and out, seeing how different things affect you. And it's just fine tuning those things and then making it a sustainable lifestyle. It's really, it's not hard. It's just getting past that mental barrier. Or multiple you know, barriers. Unlearning what what was wrong is the is harder than it is than, than learning something. Yeah, yeah, the new yeah, thing. Yeah. So and it gets in the way. You're absolutely right. Uh, yeah. Lying to someone, they say, the say is lying to someone is easier than telling them they've been lied to. You know, yeah. it's a lot easier for them to, to believe a lie than it is for them to understand they've been lied to and and, and reverse it. And so. I probably butchered that expression, but you get the no. idea. It's like it's 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 harder to unlearn something you put faith in, but even though it was, you know it's wrong or you've been told it's wrong, yeah. than it is. To, I mean, it's, it's so much easier just to follow the lie. And so, uh, you know, absolutely. But the, you're, you said the, the key word there was sustainable, and it's like find something you can sustain. And if, if your lifestyle, your habits, or the things you build yeah. up are not sustainable over the long term, 
then uh, yeah. you might want to rethink what you're doing because yeah. uh, that's that's kind of the goal is to sustain life. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Sustain health, sustain mobility, sustain quality of life. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. And it's, you can be doing all the things. And like I said, as a practitioner, finding out that you have something and you're, it, it's, it like puts a huge halt mm. in what you're doing. And it, it's like, okay, well, you know, just remember, I, this is something I tell my patients, your doctor is a patient too. Yep. And your no. doctor, <laughs> yeah, your doctor is supposed to be guiding you. But if, if they're not practicing what they preach, and I see in my profession big time, I see plenty. And yeah, I mean, it's any part of medicine, but it is, are you going to listen to someone talk to you about nutrition that is like 50, 100 pounds overweight? Or a lung surgeon that tells you to quit smoking and they go smoke a pack a day? Like it's, if you practice when you preach and you live by example, people tend to follow you more and, and trust you because you're actually doing what you're telling them is good for them. And when you have healthcare, you know, professionals in any broad range throughout the world telling people what dietary guidelines are and what they're supposed to do, and they are like skinny, ash, and gray and don't look healthy at all, or they're morbidly obese and telling you what to do you're like well what are you doing you know like how's that working for you <laughs> yeah it's not working for you and yeah you want to give people something to work towards like when you put your post on social media and people see like wow look he's got a great physique that didn't happen overnight like you have to work at it every day you know dr ashley can lift this much well that didn't happen overnight you know it's it is daily habits, and just like many other people who are in the um, you know health, fitness, nutrition industry, they will tell you that what you're seeing right now is a product of just relentless work, and it's never finished. Yeah. yeah, it's never done. Never done. No, it isn't. It's always. I'm always trying to learn, trying to stay intellectually yep. uh, humble and uh, curious. Yes and uh, moving forward and addressing things as they, as they appear. It's like layers, you know, you get a little, yeah. little deeper. Yeah. Now, that's why I like staying plugged in with a community of people who are thinking the same way and, and, and when the same way, because then I get challenged by them as well. And, and not in a bad, but in a way that makes me say, okay, I, I can level up here. What, what can, I, yeah. can I take from them that's gonna help me yeah. in my journey as well? What can I take from their journey that helps me in mine? And so yeah. uh, staying in that community, staying gay around people, who are like-minded, moving in the same direction, have the same kind of solid understanding of health of being holistic is really, I think, vital uh, to being consistent and staying on that path. Because if you're constantly around people who think you're odd or strange yeah. or questioning what you're doing yeah. or uh, just putting doubt in your mind about what you're doing, yeah, and you don't have a resource of people around you that are reinforcing it and who are doing, you know, walking the same path and having their sharing their journey, sharing their ups and downs. Yeah. Then you're not, the chances of you sticking with it are, are pretty slim. Yes. And I think that plugging in there uh, to, to that kind of people, that kind of group, whether it's online, offline, or both, you, you just need, uh, you've got to find them. You've got to find that, that uh, your, your, your team, you know, yeah. your, journey, your group that's, that's really supporting you and, yeah. uh, and helping you just walk it out because and know that okay no we're looking for we we're gonna push through we're gonna get where you're going this is great and you celebrate the wins and you uh, yeah. and you help each other up when you when you fall yeah and, and yeah I, th I think that's uh, what uh, a lot of us have been missing absolutely if you don't have a support system even if it's three people right. it uh, it feels very lonely. And when you start to chain, like, no one will question eating a bag of chips, a bunch of donuts, drinking ubiquitous amounts of coffee. The second you change to a healthier lifestyle, well, why, why are you doing that? Like, I, I thought cold water was hard on your body. Your salt water is bad. Why are you doing that? Like, right. well, who, when did you become a doctor? <laughs> you don't have to, you understand what I'm saying? You, you don't have to be a doctor to know this stuff. 
It's just everyone decides that when you start to go a healthy route, something is wrong because it's it's not about you. It's about them questioning their own exactly. habits and it freaks them out. And so the more they question, when they kind of pepper you with stuff, it's actually them trying to figure out what can I do for me? What are they seeing that I'm not seeing? Well, it's what you know. I was just saying about it's hard to, it's hard to convince a man he's been lied to. Yeah. It's easier to, you know, to believe the lie than to convince him he's been lied to. It's like, okay, yeah. that, wait a minute, you're challenging my belief system. You're challenging the narrative I've put into place where you're just challenging my ego that says I yeah. know I could be doing better, but I'm not because this feels, this, this satisfies my, my, uh, my need to, to feed by stress or whatever it is that yeah. they're doing with that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's their comfort. They're, you're challenging their comfort. And yeah. so, uh, no, I think that's, that's true. That's why I say you need that. You need that group around you that totally. helps you continue to, to push through until you figure out what yours is and you own it. And it oh, becomes yeah. so intrinsic that, that you then become bulletproof to a lot of those things. But yeah. I mean, early on, especially I, 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 even at this point, I still crave community of people where I can just like, I'm not weird. I can yeah. be like minded. The conversation starts at a different level. Yes. Uh, I'm not trying yeah. to explain what I'm eating. I'm talking about something on a much higher level that is yes. more important. It's like, what are you doing for sleep? Or what are you doing for yeah. ability? And, you know, and it, and it elevates the conversation, but you also, you feel like, okay, I feel I, I'm not, I'm not having to defend myself. I am digging in and being vulnerable and I can, that's when you really grow is when you can, oh, allow your yeah. group of people, we can allow yourself to be. And yeah, so I think that's why community is so important. Yeah, you know, to, to them. But um, thank you so much for your time for t taking yeah. time. Out. I know it's a work day for you. You know, it's the office, and I appreciate you yeah. taking the time once again uh, on Instagram at dr. Ashley Sailor, and that's Sailor with S A Y L O R. Yep. Uh, and then uh, Sailor Chiropractic dot com. Yes, data, data. Yeah. Right. it's okay when you're done. <laughs> <you're laughs> <you're laughs> And I, well, I'm, you know, people go, are you an Arvada or Arvada? It's, I don't care. <laughs> I grew up in California and I live in Nashville for 25 years. It's like my, my accent is just, it's just, It goes every which way. I don't it, hear It goes a lot of directions. <laughs> so. Um, well, it was, it was truly a pleasure. I, I thoroughly enjoyed talking about this. And uh, the more people we can help reach, the better. I mean, yep. that's always the goal. Just, just helping people. It's, that is all this is about. Every day what we're doing is just helping and doing everything possible to try to get people who need someone to relate to. True. And I always Perfect. hope and pray that we can, we can do that in whatever aspect that we're doing it. Absolutely. Well, thank you again and have a great rest of your week. Thank you. You do the same. I appreciate it.